Welcome to this new life. We're so excited that you're watching today and we believe God has a powerful message for you. Today, Evangelist Pia Hulgo is going to share the Word of God with us. So keep your heart and mind open and be ready to hear what God has for you. I am excited that you are watching with us here today in this program. And today I'm going to start a series about divine healing. So if you are sick or if you know of somebody who is sick, maybe a family member or a neighbor or so, please pay close attention and maybe even invite these people to come and watch this program together with uh, us. So um, we're going to start out reading a scripture from Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, the very last line in that verse. And it says like this, for I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. This is an amazing promise that God is giving where he's describing himself. He didn't say that he can heal or someday he said, I am a healing God. And this is what we are going to make um, look into here over these next weeks to see what is it the Bible says about God as our healer. And let me just make it clear from beginning. This is not a complete in-depth study of every detail uh, about what the Bible says about healing. But I'm simply going to cover five biblical truths about healing. And that's going to be our focus. And I know there's many other great details, many other angles to, to put into this. Um, but um, I'm simply going to share some simple biblical facts about God being our healer. But before we start to study, let's take a view on a few testimonies first. This gentleman, his name is Zacharia. He was not able to talk, to speak. He was mute when he came here tonight. And he explained it like this, when we prayed for him, something just left him and now he can talk. He can say his name, he can explain his story. Jesus Christ has healed him. Don't feel that, ain't it? This lady had been completely deaf on both ears for two years, but tonight Jesus healed her and she can hear again. Hallelujah! Amen! Great to, to see how God is healing and doing miracles also today. The first we are going to look into is that Jesus was the fulfillment of all the promises of God. When we read in the uh, book of um, uh, 2 Corinthians, we read in verse chapter 1, verse 20, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen to the glory of God through us. All the promises that we read through the Bible all the way up to the coming of Jesus, all those promises was revealing the nature and character and uh, the heart of God. In the Old Testament, yes, we did see and read about some miracles and healings taking place, but it was like it came to a totally new level and dimension uh, when Jesus was born. And that is because that Jesus, being the Son of God, He was the fulfillment of all these promises that God has given. Also the promise we read in the beginning, where, where God said, I am the Lord, your healer. All this was included in Jesus Christ. When He says that all the promises of God in Him, that's Him is referring to Jesus Christ, is yes, it means it is fulfilled and it is amen. What does this mean, the word amen? It really means so be it. That there's no discussion left, there's no doubt left. This is how God wants it to be. And now we're going to look into all of this. It's very interesting how Jesus, when he started out his ministry here on planet Earth, he started out reading from the prophet of Isaiah. And we read how in Luke chapter 4, how he opened the 
the, the scrolls. And then he started to read one of these promises that God had given in the past. And we read from verse 17, 18 and 19. And he, that's Jesus, was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to recover your sight to the blind, to set the liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then we read when Jesus then closed the book, there was a moment of silence and then he said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. You know, Jesus was the fulfillment of the promises of God. And included in this is also healing. Ever since the fall of man, sickness came into the world. In other terms, it was not God's original attention. It was not when he created the earth and Garden of Eden, there were no sickness. But because of fall of man, sickness came into the world. And the first biblical fact I would like to share is that Jesus has paid for our healing. In Isaiah chapter 53, we read this scripture, which is a prophecy about the coming Redeemer, the coming Savior, and um, what he was to do. And even people who don't believe in Jesus admit that when we read this chapter 53 in the book of Isaiah, that we there start to realize that this is really an in-depth, detailed description of what happened and what Jesus did on the cross. One of the things we read is in verse 5, where it says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was brewed for our iniquities. The chastement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus paid on the cross for our sins to be forgiven, but he also paid for us to be healed. I believe this is referring to mental health, it's referring to physical health as well. Actually, God wants to restore our entire being. And Jesus came to pay for our healing. It's very interesting. It did not say that it was someday it's going to happen, but it said something that has already taken place. It was in past tense. We are healed by his stripes. It's like a payment that he already have done. This scripture is quoted also in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says verse, in verse 24, verse B, by whose stripes you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. Here Peter is referring to that, that this scripture from Isaiah and he's even adding to it like, you know, this has already taken place now. We are on the other side of the cross. So by the payment on the cross, Jesus provided healing for us. This is amazing. That Jesus cares for our well-being, including our health. Sometimes I've heard people say this, oh, but it's because you are a sinner that you are sick. Well, I don't think we can make it that simple. I know many great people living a righteous, fair life and uh, even following Jesus and still they're struggling with, with uh, issues in their life. This is not how simple it can be made. We read in the Gospel of John 
some of the disciples of Jesus, they, they asked him a, a question because they brought a blind person to him. And then his disciple asked him, John 9 verse 2, his disciple asked him saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? I think this is a classic human way of thinking. Oh, somebody has done something wrong and now this is the consequence of it. So who did the sin? Was it him or was it his parents? Since he was born blind, this is not making sense. This man was born blind. That little infant, uh, that little um, fetus, and that little unborn child in the stomach could of course not uh, you know, have been already sinning there, so causing that consequence to be, uh, for him to be blind. And Jesus makes it very clear. And he says, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind because the world is infected with the consequences of the fall of man. He said, nobody has sinned, not this man, neither his parents. And then he continues, but the glory of the works of God shall be revealed in him. And then Jesus healed this blind man. Often we think it like, okay, I have, must have done something wrong since I am sick in my life. And yes, I do know that living a sinful lifestyle can bring bad things into our life. I do know that. But it's interesting that Jesus never told people that were sick when they were brought to him. He never told them, first, you need to change your lifestyle. Secondly, you need to have forgiveness. And then we can come to the point of healing. No, he was healing right and left. No matter of the background, no matter even, or even of the belief system, he was simply healing people because he loves people. And then, yes, sometimes he said, you know, don't do this again or change this in your life because it's not bringing any good with you. So when, when Jesus was paying for our healing, it was kind of higher than even the sins that we have committed. And let me just make it clear again. Of course, we can do things that is bringing or attracting negative or have consequences uh, on our life. I remember one time as I was preaching in the nation of Mexico and many came to the, to the, uh, the altar at the front and wanted prayer for healing. And then God spoke to me and said, there's people here that cannot receive their healing because of their unforgiveness. I was struggling a little bit in my heart because I said, of course, Lord, when we have this many people, there will be a certain amount of persons that has unforgiveness in their heart and bitterness. I mean, even statistics would prove this. So I was struggling a little bit with this. But at the end, I, I said, there's people here. God wants to heal you here tonight, but you need to forgive others. There's bitterness in your heart and you know it as I say it, you know it. And um, I will encourage you to forgive these people, even though that it was really bad what they did to you. I'm asking you to please forgive them. And then we started to hear testimonies. And then a young girl came up and said she had several tumors in both her breasts, really huge tumors. And she knew that when I said this about forgiveness, she knew that there was somebody she had to forgive. Somebody that had done really bad, evil things to her life. From a human perspective, everybody would think that, oh, she's in her good right not to forgive. But you see, it's important to forgive. Because if we don't forgive, it's like we close the door for God to work in our life. And then she said, she decided to forgive. And right there, she 
pray the prayer saying, Jesus, I forgive that person. Ah, uh, I know all her emotions were maybe against it and, and so, but forgiveness is a decision that we make. The interesting thing is this, as soon as she forgave, she said in that same moment she prayed that prayer, those tumors in her breasts simply vanished away immediately. She even said, my, my clothing feels too big now because they are all gone. And you see, of course, there are certain things that we need to be aware of that we, we will not have in our hearts, that we will not do uh, because it might attract or even hinder for the healing in our life. Oh, but maybe it's because that person has no faith. Well, I prayed for many who's not believing in Jesus as they come to our meetings. And as I pray and as for the sick, they experience that they are healed because God is a good God. I remember one time a, a little Hindu girl came to the platform and said, I'm healed from a brain tumor. And I kind of said, okay, do you have any parents here? And uh, the child's dad was there and he came up to the platform as well and told this story how a few weeks ago this um, little girl was, um, she was maybe 12, uh, was diagnosed with a rapid growing brain tumor. She had had severe headache non-stop. It was increasing and also it was um, affecting her vision. So she became slowly but quickly, uh, she became uh, every day uh, more and more weak in her vision and was starting to get blind. And they came to this meeting and as we were praying for the sick, the, the girl said that all the headache just left immediately and she could see clearly again. Now I was uh, excited, but I also encouraged them to go and see the hospital to have a check up on what had happened. And later on she came back and she told uh, how she went to the hospital, she got an x-ray and examination and how all the tumor was gone. It was not in a place where the doctors could do surgery. So even the doctor said, this is a miracle. We don't know what happened, but the little girl could tell, well, it's because of Jesus Christ that she was healed now. Jesus paid for our healing. And maybe you are here today and you are sick as you're watching this. Then I will encourage you to believe that Jesus Christ can heal you as well. No matter of your sickness, no matter what disease you are suffering from, even if you are not a confessing yourself as a Christian, then God still loves you. Jesus still loves you. He's still caring for you. He's just encouraging you to believe that, that Jesus Christ is the one that the Bible tells he is and also that he can heal you. We have prayed for many people that has a background as a Hindu or atheist or Muslim or animist. And we have seen how the love of God through the name of Jesus Christ has healed many. Even in these TV programs that we have been broadcasting, we get reports back of how God is doing miracles in the name of Jesus Christ and healing many. I brought just one report here from uh, a month recently. And let me just share just a few of these testimonies that is being shared here. One man was healed from migraine, suffering of constantly headache for a long time. And as we prayed in the name of Jesus, Jesus has healed him. One woman was been healed from eye cataract. Another woman had had an issue of blood for two years. For two years she has been suffering for that sickness, but now she was 
healed. Another boy had been healed from a chest infection. Another girl had been healed from a severe stomach infection. And another man was healed from a kidney disease simply by as watching these programs being being believing that that Jesus cares loves and um, they uh, connected to these prayers as they were praying in just a moment we are going to pray for you and your sickness as well but before we do so let's watch a few testimonies this gentleman had for eight years been paralyzed more or less in his left side that he could hardly walk or do anything but now Jesus has healed him he walked he ran perfectly Jesus has healed him yeah. this is Joseph since he was 16 years old that's nine years ago he has been completely blind but now he can see he can easily grasp that bottle of course he still needs to coordinate this is all new to him but he can see Jesus Christ, he has healed this young man. What a change of life this is. As you see with your own eyes, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is a miracle working God. He paid for your healing on the cross. If you are sick in your body, why don't you place your hand upon that sick body, sick body part or upon your heart right now. And then believe that Jesus Christ has paid for your healing as well on that cross. Close your eyes and just receive in your heart as we are going to pray to Jesus for healing right now. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, I thank you that you paid for our healing on the cross. I thank you that you are the same today, that you care for people, that uh, you both can and will heal. And Lord, you see every hand upon body parts right now as they are watching this program. And we pray now in the name of Jesus Christ that you are going to heal these bodies in the name of Jesus we pray and we thank you Lord Jesus and we give you the glory that you are the one and nobody else but you is going to have the glory and honor for this in the name of Jesus we pray amen now I would like you to examine yourself and just maybe over the next few times uh, just check what has happened as we prayed this prayer. Maybe even if you're going to see a doctor, ask for a checkup for that disease, just to see what has happened. And if Jesus has healed you already, why don't you share your testimony by contacting our call center? Now healing is great, but the greatest miracle a person can ever receive from Jesus is that he can forgive all your sins, and He can qualify you to go to heaven when we die. Save your soul. He can qualify you to go to heaven. This is the greatest and most important miracle you can ever experience. And if you say, I have never asked Jesus to be my Savior or the Lord of my life, then you can make this decision right here and now. Why don't you put your hand upon your heart and then pray this same prayer from your heart to Jesus Christ as I am praying it. Pray it in your own language. I will just lead you in this prayer, but when you pray from your heart with your mouth, then it's going to be your prayer to Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you can save me. I ask you, save my soul, forgive my sins. I will follow you. I will worship you every day the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. When you prayed this prayer 
from your heart, then Jesus did hear that prayer with his heart. Now it's just important that you keep yourself close to Jesus, for him to be your Lord and Savior every day the rest of your life. Let me give you three advices that will help you in doing so. Number one, pray to Jesus every day. Don't pray to any other name but the name of Jesus Christ. You can pray to Jesus at any time, at any place, and at any position. It is like talking to your best friend. Number two, when we read in the Bible, we learn more about Jesus. Like you did learn more about Jesus in this program as we was reading from the Bible. Maybe you say, but I don't have a Bible. But maybe you have a smartphone or you have access to a computer. Do you know you for free can download the entire Bible in your language? Then you have the Bible. And start out reading maybe in the Gospel of Luke or Gospel of John. And in that way, you start to learn more about Jesus, his plans, his love, his way for your life, how to stay close to him. And also, the third advice is this. You need to be together with others who's also worshiping Jesus Christ as their savior. Maybe you know of such a fellowship in your neighborhood. Why don't you ask if you can be part of that fellowship? Maybe you say to me, oh, but I don't know of such a fellowship. But then I'll encourage you, if you know, if you prayed this prayer, then I'll encourage you to contact our call center. There's people there waiting for you to make contact. They are there to answer questions you might have. They are there to pray with you and to give you advice on how to keep yourself close to Jesus. Also, by watching these programs, this is a great way where you can keep yourself close to Jesus Christ. You have been watching this new life. Make sure to watch our program next week as well, where we will continue with the second episode in the series of Divine Healing. Wow, what a powerful message that was today. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, congratulations, it's gonna transform your life. Make sure to follow the steps that were mentioned by praying to Jesus every day, reading the Word of God, and having fellowship with other believers, which is so important. We also wanna say if you need any kind of prayer, encouragement, or support, reach out to our call center. We have a team who's ready to support you, stand together with you, and pray for you in the situation that you're in. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.